All right, everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, I thought I would bring you guys around the potted trees, the potted figs, and the in-ground figs, and just point out, in particular, certain varieties that are doing quite well here this season. And we haven't seen any fruits just yet. We've seen some Braba. I've seen uh, my first main crop fig um, of the year about a week and a half ago. But um, this video is not necessarily going to be about the varieties um, that have the best fruits. But what we're going to do is walk you guys around and show you guys some of the varieties that really are producing the best. Um, that are either growing the best, producing the best, and ideally have the combination of them both, right? Whichever tree has the best growing characteristics here uh, can be sort of well depicted at this time of the year. Um, now, obviously things are going to change when the fruits actually ripen, and then you have to take the whole big picture into account, right? Because um, it's not just the leaves and how many fruits you see, but the better and more important part is how do the fruits actually taste. So we're going to go around as the season goes through. I'm going to try to do as many videos as possible on all these different varieties that I grow, especially the ones that are rather good standouts. Um, either they're very good varieties or, or the opposite. They're very bad varieties. Um, here we have trees that are in the experimental state. These are smaller pots and they still have something to prove to me, you know. So we can look at these and see an early judgment call on which of these seem to be doing rather well. Um, but most of this over here is not necessarily going to be accurate. Whatever growing characteristics we ascertain will change over time, um, especially as these trees mature. Um, figs are one of the most genetically diverse fruits that you can grow and they're also one of the most variable fruits you can grow if not the most variable so you may have one season where I see a variety like this as an example that is completely covered in fruits and then the following season it does the complete opposite or it doesn't look nearly as good as it did figs are just like that and you have to really spend honestly probably somewhere around seven or eight years to really get an accurate depiction of a particular variety uh, in terms of the growing characteristics now in terms of the fruit itself you may not have to wait nearly as long you could probably wait maybe as little as two years you could also wait um, even one year if you do some grafting and you have that particular graft on a mature rootstock and you're not over watering your trees I have really well I've ripened some very well ripened fruits guys on um, very young trees and that has stayed mostly consistent obviously um, it's gonna change and it likely will change the interior color often changes the flavors often change the amount of carbohydrates that these trees receive changes quite a bit uh, so it's really quite important, I find, uh, to sort of reserve judgment, or reserve final judgment, uh, what a lot of fig growers who are experienced with many different varieties will inevitably um, kind of scold the younger fig grower or the newer fig grower uh, because you just don't really know. Um, you really just don't. And it took me years to really understand that because you need to have years of growing figs and realizing that they change so drastically from one year to the other. But we're going to make some generalizations in this video, having said all of that. Um, and we're going to go through some of these varieties that I think are rather impressive. Um, I think it's easier to gather um, thoughts about how easy a variety is to fruit when it is young uh, because it's young and it's not mature so um, that's something called precocity and precocity is just basically again how easy a variety will fruit when it's young so what you want to do at least for me 
even with these very young trees here, is I go through these and I look at them and determine how easy it was for them to put out some fruits. And this is going to give me a good, accurate representation, I think, as good as it's going to get, anyway, for the future. Because if I'm getting a variety here like this, which is a variety called Black Celeste, which has fruits on it, and it really didn't seem all that difficult for this variety to put out the quantity and the and the the uh, ability to put out fruits, then this to me is a good sign that it's going to do well or better than probably others in my shorter season climate. And if you had a longer season, it may not necessarily matter in the long run. But there are certain varieties that, as an example, will grow very vigorously and not really put out a whole lot of fruit. And a really good example of that, I'll show you some trees I have because there's so many of them. <laughs> Especially when they're younger, guys. When they're younger, they put out a lot of growth and don't necessarily slow down enough to put out these fruits. But one in particular that comes to mind is Smith, actually. I have a number of Smith trees that are quite young. My mother Smith is now putting out fruits and doing quite well. It's got pretty good production on it. But it takes a number of years for it to really slow down. Um, other varieties, as an example, are not necessarily so quick to grow, like my Azores Dark. And Azores Dark will just put out fruits no matter what you do to it, no matter how, how hard you prune it. Um, it just seems to be a slower grower. It seems to uh, really want a fruit, right? It's got that precocity. Even as a young Azores Dark tree as this is, um, it still has that ability to really put out fruits with ease. And th that's a good genetic trait, as I mentioned here in this climate. Now, what you'll find is actually the combination of the both of what I just mentioned. And that is really where you get the most bang for your buck, I find. Um, so eventually Smith does slow down, but it is still very vigorous as an example. It always has that great vigor and gets off from the gate from the beginning of my season in April when it's still quite cold. This is one of the few figs that seems to really do something during those colder months. Um, it just has a higher degree, as I mentioned, of vigor. So therefore, when it has that higher vigor and you combine it with a trait like you see in Azores Dark that has high precocity, you then end up with the best of both worlds. So, uh, so Smith eventually ends up being that. It takes a while for it to, the productivity to really come into its own. But I'll tell you what is the number one winner right now in terms of the tree. And I've had this tree for a number of years now. It's called the uh, Calderwood Unknown. And a friend of mine who found this, Cliff, I believe, in Texas, I think it was Cliff that found this tree, uh, thought it was very similar, if not the same, as LSU Tiger. And then he confirmed it, he said, to be the same as LSU Tiger. I have yet to necessarily confirm that myself. However, you have to take Cliff's word for it because the tree does look very darn similar and behaves very similar to LSU Tiger. I have just seen on this particular tree a much better fruit quality than I've seen on the Calderwood. And it's not out of the realm of possibilities that this could be indeed the same thing as LSU Tiger. Um, but it's also not out of the realm of possibilities that it could be um, a slightly different mutation or slightly different genetically than LSU Tiger and therefore has different growing descriptors or even has a different taste profile, maybe a slightly different taste profile, maybe a slightly different appearance, et cetera, et cetera. But if you looked at the tree visually, you would say, oh, this is LSU Tiger, right? Well, the same thing is said with hardy Chicago types, and I have many and have grown many hardy Chicago types. I'll show you a tree in a minute. 
that uh, has actually three different hardy Chicago types on it. But these hardy Chicago types are very easily identified by the leaf and then the fruits, and they all visually look rather similar. Azores Dark is one of them. Um, however, there is some genetic variability as, of course, they don't all have the same exact genetics and therefore they throw you off a little bit and have different descriptors to them and they even taste different so I don't think it's remotely it's remote I think it's very possible that although Cliff thinks that they're the same and I certainly agree with him that they could also be slightly different at the same time um, having said that, I have not confirmed it myself, right? So I've never had an LSU Tiger that was, uh, I would say, a, a good representation of the variety just yet um, to really be able to say that they are the same or they're not the same. You know what I mean? So I'm waiting this year. Uh, we're going to get some fruits, actually, that ripen, that'll ripen around the same time as this. Um... I have some of them in the ground and they should be pretty decent and we'll get a good accurate representation however i will tell you that this is one of the best as i was saying this is probably the best variety i have this year for the same reasons that smith is it's very vigorous it comes out of the gate very quickly uh it puts out fruit extremely easy uh i wouldn't say the easiest but one of the easiest varieties I have at putting out fruits and it's also very productive uh, a lot of these branches here here's a really insane branch by the way if you look at these this node here where my thumb is there's a node that's putting out two different figs right now below it has two different figs on it and then below it has two different figs so within these three nodes within literally three inches of growth there is six fruits forming which is just crazy um, so it does put out some fruits and you can, it's not just on that branch you got some double nodes double fruits back here um, the whole thing is covered in fruits look at this one here there's four fruits there in the width of an inch it's it's just it's just insane that that particular fig right there in terms of the productivity it's also really early too um and because i've had the fruit enough i can accurately say that it's one of the best tasting figs i have it's probably i think i rated it last year at a four out of five which is um quite a good rating four out of five and it does have notes, I find, of Concord Grape in there. Um, so for me, that has become like a standard fig here. And when I look at these varieties and I do some comparison, and if you're going to do the same thing, you should get yourself three varieties. One, Hardy Chicago. Uh, two, Villette de Bordeaux. You can see a Villette de Bordeaux here is forming fruits and has well basically fruits all over it um, here's another one another branch of Villa de Bordeaux and then the third variety is Celeste which you can get really any of the Celestes I find are really good standards of excellence in terms of fig genetics and they've got it all guys they have it all this is another this is the original, when I showed you guys this tree here, this is actually a Celeste, a black Celeste. Um, so, yeah, if you don't have those particular figs that I've mentioned, and you're not using them as the standards that you compare all your other varieties to, I don't think you necessarily have the great, a great, accurate representation of what you're seeing. You know what I mean? You could see a variety and say, wow, that looks like this one here. <laughs> wow, that looks really good. Look at that. All that fruit set right there, right? Well, what about all the other qualities of it? What about the um, how early it ripens or how rain resistant it is or if it does if it doesn't spoil in high heat? 
You know, does it split? Uh, how does it taste? And those three figs I mentioned have got it all. Across the board, they've got it all. Another one you could probably put in that category is something called Long de Dute. You could probably also put Ron de Bordeaux in that category. There's a number of these varieties that uh, have such good overall performance that uh, they become the standard. And that's really what I measure uh, these varieties against. Some other things I look for, if we're going to be on the subject for a bit, is figs and varieties that will dry very easily. Because if they can dry very easily, they need a couple different characteristics. One, they need to have very little cracking, if any. Um, very good split resistance, very good humidity resistance, um, a high enough bricks, a consistently high bricks, to then avoid mold and rot, um, and to be able to do that in a very humid climate such as my own. And there are a number of figs here, actually, there's at least two different figs I grow that are virtually indestructible here. This is one of them that we're looking at. It's called uh, Neruciola de Elba, and it has become the standard here. It has replaced Party Chicago, Celeste, um, Violet de Bordeaux. This is the one I compare them all to now, in addition to another one. But um, Neruciola de Elba, as I said, is basically indestructible, and the fruits are very, very good. We did a video on it last year we did a tasting video um, and it just dries on the tree very early you know it, it's not like other varieties can't dry on the tree it's to the degree of ease that certain varieties will dry on the tree because I need all the help I can get here it, this is not a very fig conducive climate so if I don't have the best genetics in the world that are available here in the United States, then I'm not going to succeed, basically. So um, that's normally what I look for. And when I had selected a number of these varieties here, guys, that we have in the smaller pots, um, and we decided which of these varieties that I was going to grow, that was one of the best things I looked for because I didn't want to grow something I didn't think was going to have a reasonable amount of success here otherwise it's a complete waste of time um, so I did my research very thoroughly acquired a number of varieties that I thought would be worth it worthwhile and uh, the top of my list of characteristics I look for is whether or not it has the ability to dry very easily so that's um, a big little lesson there for all you guys out there, um, what are some other varieties that I think have really been standouts or something I'm looking forward to, I guess, is this variety here. It's called uh, Paradiso. But, you know, there's a lot of Paradisos out there. Um, I have one that originally comes from Bode in France. I have, uh, I've had one that is in the, has been in the United States for a very long time. Uh, it's called Paradiso Jean. There's Paradiso Giovanni, there's uh, Paradiso Bronze. There's all kinds of Paradisos, guys. It's crazy. And then there's this one here, which I believe is the one that was depicted in Galicio's drawings. I don't have proof. I don't really care either at this point. Um, I just know that this one's really good. This one comes from, uh, originally comes from Ciro in Italy. And uh, I'll tell you, it has... A really good taste quality um, and it's also very early it's like a panache it reminds me a lot of panache and I wonder if it is a form of panache you can see the leaves actually <laughs> remind me quite a bit of panache um, which is quite strange because uh, panache is not a fig that does well here it splits way too easily the humidity resistance on it is very low However, Panache is one of the best tasting figs you can grow. Very underrated. Um, gets a lot of sla like a lot of hate, I think, because it's common and it has stripes. But 
Penache is the tiger fig is one of the best figs you can eat. Um, and this one I think is pretty much the same thing. I'm, I'm sensing, I'm getting that feeling, but it doesn't have the stripes. What it does have is um, a much earlier fig. It ripens significantly earlier, almost as early as some of the earliest figs I have, by the way. And it has a better rain resistance and split resistance. So um, for that, I think I found a better panache without even really realizing it. I was looking for other other things. There's another panache that's quite that should be better and close to this. I think it's very close to this, which is called the Napolitana Blanca from Ponds. And I'd be interested to grow that one side by side this to then really confirm that or deny it. Uh, that's just a hunch, obviously. But again, they, uh, I will have some panache figs this year that will ripen right alongside this. And we'll compare them directly. I like this one so much uh, because it's an earlier Adriatic, right? That's what something people are always looking for is an early Adriatic. People are lost on that stuff, by the way. Um, you know, for a while, it took me a, a while to figure out if all the cold and alms taste the same. And there wasn't really a definitive answer on it. And now it seems to be that people are really looking for something that is an earlier to ripen Adriatic. And there's a number of them out there, guys. Jesus. <laughs> Did you guys see that? Listen, I reacted very poorly. But they came right at my face, number one. Number two, I would say about three hours ago, a bird pooped on my shoulder. So I'm not really in the mood to be uh, in close proximity to birds right now. <laughs> We've lost our mind here, guys. We've totally lost our mind. Okay. Whew. All right. Let's regroup for this video. We're not gonna. I'm not gonna edit that out. I've already spent 22 minutes. I'm not gonna start over either. Um, <laughs> now the the green Adriatic. So the Adriatic type is basically like your standard green Aishia, and green Aishia is like you know Adriatic. It basically gets its name from Adriatic, the Adriatic fig, which was grown commercially in Fresno in California for quite a many years before Black Mission, before Brown Turkey, before Panache. Um, and maybe Panache is like, it is probably some sort of um, ramada of the Adriatic because Adriatic is very similar to Panache. So I wouldn't put it, uh, I wouldn't completely dismiss that theory, but um, I will say that that's sort of the Adriatic type that you're looking for. If you look it up, it's a green fig um, that looks a lot like Panache with no stripes, red interior, um, usually a mid to late season fig. It has many names, comes in many forms, and they're all almost identical, just like the hardy Chicago types. You got things like, uh, like I said, green Aishia, you got strawberry verte, you have... Um, Strawberry, which I've told I've been told is quite different actually, and I'm looking forward to trying that. Uh, there's also JH Adriatic and uh, Rockaway Green, Lake Spur, even White Madeira. You could make an argument could be in that category. Although I've heard this is my White Madeira, by the way, that I have grafted. I've heard that uh, it is quite different though than the Adriatic types, and then. People are now coming out and saying, well, there's other early Adriatics like Green Michurinska, and there's also Vertolino and Fico Salame, and um, you also got, believe it or not, the Paradiso I have right there that people don't really know about just yet. Um, there's also Verdino del Nord, which is basically uh, an early to mid season Col de Dom. Uh, which is it's an incredible fig. You also got the Blanche de Du Cezanne, which is not necessarily early, but it's quite good. And the point I'm trying to make here is that 
um, there's a lot of these potential figs that are coming in and being classified as, oh, it's an early Adriatic, but is it? Like, does it actually taste like an Adriatic? Just because it's green skinned and has a red interior doesn't necessarily classify it as an Adriatic. Um, you know, what is the difference between JH Adriatic and White Madeira number one? Probably quite a bit. Yet, you could, I guess, put them in a similar category, and if you had to, and therefore, um, it's sort of misleading, right? So I guess what people are really trying to say is that they're looking for an early green fig with a red interior that doesn't necessarily have to taste like strawberries, because that's another leading indicator of Adriatic is that it tastes like strawberry. Right, that's hence the name strawberry or strawberry verte. Um, that's the main flavor in those figs. So, if we could find one that's early, and I'm sure there is, I'm sure Verlino, which I have growing, and I know that the Paradiso Ciro does. I have the green Michurinska. Do they taste exactly like the Adriatics and taste exactly like strawberries? I don't know. But. I'll tell you, we've got that fulfilled. Um, this is an impressive variety here. This is, um, I was showing you guys this earlier. It's got fruit all over it, and it will do this every year. Um, it did this for me last year. It's doing this for other people. Uh, it's called uh, Preto de Torres Novas. It's one of the earliest Portuguese varieties, one of the most reliable Portuguese varieties. Some people are saying it actually tastes pretty good, so we'll see about that um, I have low expectations for the flavor however uh, this I'm looking forward to this one for sure um, I am also looking forward to this guy back here this is Juale Noir we have a fruit maybe a couple fruits forming on this tree this is a favorite of somebody in Malaysia a commercial grower in Malaysia we'll see you know being that um, that really will be one of the first figs I, I eat based off of his recommendation. We'll see if he um, really knows what he's talking about. Um, we also have an insane winner. I've already mentioned Nerucciola de Elba, but we have a potted Nerucciola de Elba here, which has put out just a stupid amount of fruit. Um, that's kind of what this variety does. It grows well. It's not very vigorous, I will say. There's two different ways, I guess, you could describe vigor. It puts out a lot of growth, but it's very thin growth. Um, and because it's so thin, I think the vigor is, is less, lower than other varieties, I guess you could say. You know, whereas the um, brown turkey or black missions or black BD-10 or this guy here, the LSU Tiger Calderwood, gets very thick wood. Um, in addition to putting out a lot of growth. Uh, so I would say even this tree here, the Verdino del Nord, is quite, it's almost, it's not necessarily not vigorous, but it's not really vigorous. It's such a strange way of, of uh, classifying them. It's so weird. I um, hope that makes sense. Like you can see on this branch, there's a lot of growth but historically, this variety puts out a lot of smaller, thinner branches. So I wouldn't classify it as very vigorous um, because of that. But the point is, is that Nerucciola de Elba is literally filled with fruits in there, uh, head to toe, on top to bottom of those branches. Another one that seems to be quite impressive is this. This is another Paradiso here. Not really too impressed with the rain resistance so far, but this is a Paradiso from, from Bode in France, which reminds me a lot of a Paradiso we have here in the United States called Paradiso Jean, so we'll see if that stays true. Another variety that impressed me was Victoria. It takes a while, a number of years, for it to slow down. It needs to slow down its, uh, its vigor and its growth, but when it does, it puts out a lot of fruits and um, 
I was even tempted to really get rid of this particular variety, but it's loaded this year. Capulcurt Negra is a pretty impressive uh, specimen over there. Maybe I'll go around and show it to you. Um, Italian 258 normally is quite impressive. Uh, this year it really struggled. We, we root pruned it and uh, it doesn't seem to really be liking life. Um, what else is impressive? The Sucret is normally quite productive. Always impressed, I think, by Sucret. Um, we have a number of varieties here that I'd like to, ch to chat with you guys about. You just don't have enough time, honestly. We're already, I think, over 30 minutes now. Uh, Galicia Negra, I'm a big fan of this fig. It takes a number of years, like the others, to slow down. But when it does, it's, it's worth it. I'm going to pinch off this tip here. Get some fruits on that branch. And also on this branch here, I'm going to take off this tip. Um, it's got plenty of fruits on it, as is. There's actually this other branch over here. Yeah, I didn't really get to pinch this one, I guess. I'm going to take off uh, this branch, the tip off of that branch. Um, I guess these other ones here we'll leave alone for now. But it's quite a good fig. I do really enjoy it. Um, however, they seem to all ripen at once, and I don't really like that. That's a bad, that's a really bad characteristic. Um, I think for years now, this particular rootstock has been quite impressive um, as a rootstock, believe it or not. Because every year, this rootstock puts out figs. The, the varieties on top of that rootstock put on a lot of figs. They don't really grow all that much, but they set a lot of fruit. And I wonder maybe if this, the rootstock has anything to do with it. Um, it's tough to really say, but I'll tell you, these varieties that have been on here, they used to have four varieties on this rootstock, but uh, everything that's ever been on here has been very productive. So four varieties. Borda Barraquer is left. And this bottom one here is, if I can get it, Bovetta Campos. So between the two of them on this rootstock, it's just been very impressive. And I, I would like to maybe continue to evaluate that rootstock, potentially. Uh, we have uh, Villette de Bordeaux, another one right next to me, which is, of course, one of the standards. We have over here um, Dells Armatons from Ponds. Put out a lot of nice figs for me. Um, still quite a young tree. Very similar, I find, to Black Madeira. Uh, probably better uh, in all aspects, I find. It just uh, seems to be even later <laughs> than Black Madeira, which is a bit upsetting. Um, but it doesn't necessarily ripen its first fig later. Uh, but it takes a long time in between the figs to ripen. So it'll ripen one fig, and then 10 days later, you'll have another ripe fig. And then 10 days later, you'll have another ripe fig. Where Galicia Negra may have five or seven figs on it ripe within two days. You know what I mean? So it's kind of strange. How this all works, man. All these different genetics. So, so wild. Albo uh, is another one I'm really impressed with. Uh, didn't put out a whole lot of growth this year. Got off to a very late start. In the same pot is a uh, Hative de Argentile, which is very impressive. Always is, it seems like. Especially this grafted tree. The fruits are beautiful. Um, I like the health and the vigor of this tree. It's also mid-season. Uh, also very complex and interesting cherry flavored fig. But it was in the same pot as the other tree here, which was grafted, Albo has been grafted onto it, and yellow long neck down there. And they really didn't do much this year. However, Getting off to such a late start, it didn't seem to matter for Albo because it's putting out fruits on its own without any help all up and down the branches. It is a very early variety, easy to fruit. Um, 
and it's one of them I would imagine that you could put in that category of very easy to fruit. However, we've just had a lot of heat and a lot of these varieties with all this heat will fruit uh, seemingly no matter what. They'll just bolt. So um, I think it just goes to show that even if some of them are quite late and, and they do get going at least, they will fruit by a certain date here just because of how much heat is in the, uh, in the area. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm quite impressed with the Albo and I'd like to propagate it, make a copy of it if I can this year. It's going to be difficult because um, it really didn't grow all that much. But it is what it is. Uh, and then um, also very impressed by the hate of the Argentile as well. And I think that's sort of mostly what I want to show you back there. I think what also is impressive um, is the early violet I have over here. Quite quite a nice fruit set on it. It also is supposed to be very early. There's also the... Um, back over here is the... Let's see. There's Rosalino. You can see this is Rosalino. Covered in fruits. We got a Ron de Bordeaux here. Another good fruiter for everybody. And then uh, we have also Capole Curt Negra which is just now forming a second main crop for me. I pinched a number of branches. It formed a couple fruits there, but uh, this is a big, vigorous tree. So it's got vigor and production. Even though it got off to quite a late start and didn't transition well out of the greenhouse. Very impressive. Very, very impressive. Uh, the Ponte Tresa, another late start but it's now forming a ton of fruit, which is really good. So you can tell Ponte Trace is actually quite a productive variety. I hear white Madeira is a similar fig in its high production. So big names, but they're actually some, they're backing it up, you know? Our in-ground trees are looking pretty good too. There's a couple standouts. I think the St. Martin was really the biggest standout of them all. Really crazy. I didn't have to do anything to this. The low tunnels really made a big difference, but it's got fruits all over it. Actually, I did pinch one of the branches down here, but the whole thing is forming fruits on its own without any help. Um, yeah, let's just see what it does. I'm quite impressed. Uh, what else is impressive? The Blanche de Duce Cezanne is covered in fruits. Violette Sapor and Borges Oak Reese are extremely impressive figs. Um, you can't go wrong with those. And then I also have Love back there, Golden Rainbow. And really to speak of those characteristics I mentioned, right? When talking about very high vigor and also having a very easy ability to fruit. That's what we're really looking for, right? That's going to get you, if you want the highest production possible, that is really what will get it for you. Um, and you're, you're going to find that in the Golden Rainbow which and the Yellow Long Neck, which in my opinion would probably put out the heaviest production. If you weigh the entire harvest, you get the most, the heaviest production out of those, those varieties. And then another good choice is the... Um, the Borja Soak Reese and the Vila Tsipor. They are really quite incredible, even when you cut them back really hard, which is nice because some of these varieties here, like Black Beauty 10, this is Smith, this is a uh, Nero 600M, a Vila de Bordeaux type. Uh, behind me, we have some older, more mature trees as well. This is um, Noir de Barbantane. And then you've got Italian 258. They just don't respond very well after being pruned so hard and there's some things i'm going to do and try like we're trialing some girdling i know you guys probably saw that video we're going to also do something called uh thinning we're going to thin out the shoots very heavily next year on those particular varieties 
So that will be important, I think, to try to get those trees to fruit after cutting them back so hard. Another one that I'm really impressed with the precocity of, not necessarily the vigor, but precocity is uh, on the back of Reno here and um, really is covered in fruits. Didn't get off to the greatest start, yet it's still covered in fruits. I, I really am impressed with that fig. I just am waiting for the flavor to mature. If the flavor matures, it'll be a keeper. If not, um, well, still other things to evaluate with it, but yeah, we've got some other figs back here that are quite impressive, like a very young white Madeira. It's got four figs on it. Uh, this one here is quite impressive. Bichotto. Tolosa seems to put out figs very easily and grows very quickly. That one's going to be a big time winner. Um, in that department. What else we got? Barile is one that's sort of impressing me at a younger age. Uh, the Aishia Black Porcaroles Conservatory is impressing me. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Lava Floor seems to be relatively productive. There's the different Celeste that I have, blue and black. Ondata seems quite impressive. Uh, what is very easy to fruit? Let me think about this out of these newer trees. Princessa has been very easy to fruit. Very odd, but it has. It's really quite interesting. Um, Fane and uh, uh, Martinenca Blanca has been re relatively easy. Um, man, there's a number of them in here, but I don't want to speak too soon on some of these. Some of them, obviously, you can tell a lot better than others. Um, but having said that, still, they're all quite young. Uh, our Ronde Bordeaux. No low, no low tunnel whatsoever is going to put out a lot of fruit for me. So that's impressive, uh, being cut back and coming back from being cut back and still producing a lot of fruits. Impressive, very impressive. Um, I should get some fruits off of this uh, Sultane, so that's really nice to see. I'm uh, happy about that. I wonder if some of these other branches will have fruits on them. Doesn't look like it. It seems to be more of a vigorous variety until it slows down. Uh, the biggest winner, I think, out of all the in-ground trees is this guy right here, LSU Huye, and the LSU Champagne. And they're kind of similar figs. Um, if I had to pick one, I would probably would pick the Huye. LSU Tiger is also quite impressive, and so is uh, Azores Dark as in-ground trees go. And I'll tell you, this uh, LSU Fouye is just loaded with figs uh, all up and down the branches. I pinched some of them, others I let go. Others had formed fruits on their own. Um, it has a lot of growth, a lot of shoots that was greatly affected and influenced by the low tunnels. And we did cut it back and you can see, look, there's little fruits forming on these branches. Some branches are more impressive than others, but overall, um, probably will be one of my earliest varieties to fruit. And the same thing, actually, there's a number of them over here. Stallion, a blue Celeste, Negretta is impressive. La Magdalene, also extremely impressive, actually. I think La Magdalene's probably a very, very early fig. Incredibly early, actually. Um, and here you go. Here is a stallion. Puts out a lot of fruits all up and down these branches. It does tend to drop some fruits, though. So hopefully it can get over that this year. 
Um, overall, we're looking really good in this part of the yard, I'll tell you. And uh, LSU Champagne, I think, is that one right there. Again, covered in fruits. You can see all the double dots. And some have formed, I think, on their own over here. Oh, that one was pinched. But yeah, here we go. So I have been overly impressed here, guys, with some of these figs. Um, they are getting some age to them, and that makes a big difference. I know a lot of you guys maybe were thinking I was crazy going away from the pots, but it just goes to show if I can get more days of low tunnels on those trees, we only had 40 days this year. If I do the full 90, oh my God, it's, uh, it's gonna be a night and day difference between the potted trees and the in-ground figs. And uh, you're not gonna believe it. So I'm excited, I really am. Uh, I'm excited for what the future is gonna hold with some of these. And I've been really taking good notes. This is a good way to take notes, these videos of different varieties that will do well in the ground in the system I have laid out. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this this little thing here. Well, it's pretty long. If you guys got to the end, I really do appreciate it. Uh, consider subscribing, obviously, and check out our blog, figboss.com. This was almost a 50 minute video, I think. All right, guys, if you got a kick out of the bird thing, let me know. <laughs> I hope it came, I hope it was on the screen. I hope you guys picked that up because those things came in pretty darn close to me. They're probably, I guess they were maybe six feet away. And when they come in like that and they swoop this way, I have bad memories of getting pooped on. So, um, yeah. <laughs> all right. We'll see everybody soon, all right? Take care, guys.